everybody and welcome back to another Journeyman podcast. This is episode 31 and today is the 21st of July 2020. It's a great day, lovely weather. I've uh, I've had one failure this morning and I've had other than that pretty mediocre day. I mean it depends of course what we consider a success and whatnot. I've also, uh, no, you know what, I have had a success. I just had a shower, I cooked my eggs in the morning. That's great. Um, but you see, when you come out of the shower and then you moisturize, for example, uh, I don't really like having dry skin. It's not something I derive pleasure from. I also know that it isn't pleasurable for those around me if I have dry skin. But if if you moisturize your skin, I find I always end up with like this, this like layer of grease on all, all my skin. I really don't like it. I think it's just like the residue or whatever when it hasn't rubbed in properly. I just feel like I've been deep fried or something. Um, no fun. No fun there. But now this is the really exciting part is that I got a job. I got a job. Uh, it was really, really exciting. Uh, so I'm just working in this pub. And you learn all sorts of things working about in, in a pub. I'm at front of house and working with people and everyone. First of all, um, I I think people, when they are, have gone to work, or what they do is in their mind they tell themselves that they're like at work, or, um, which is quite a strange thing because they seem to lose a sort of sense of like, I wouldn't say charisma, but definitely kind of excitement about things. And if someone's working, then they, I find that their energy level just kind of goes down. Whereas as soon as they're off their shift, it's like really great. And you can just have a laugh and talk about all sorts of things, which I just thought was kind of strange. Because if we break this down, I think that if we're, if we consider everything that we're doing now to be like all we can do, right? If, if you're in the present moment, then there's nothing else you can be doing, but being in the present moment, you're not... You know, you're not actually uh, objectively at work. You're not objectively uh, in your free time. Like, it's just, this is just all you have. Like, you're here, right? So you might as well have fun. You might as well do something quite exciting. You have a good attitude towards it. That's the thing I can't understand. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, to be fair, maybe I'm just excited and young. And then once I realize the miseries of the world and the fact that after pouring your 4,820th pint, you start to uh, question whether it's a job or just a prison really you know behind that bar but it's cool and I, I, I like going around talking to people as well that's fun saying hello you know what would you like and they say oh can i have a lager and then i have to memorize like the seven or like six or seven lagers we have and then no 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 it's not a lager we want an ipa and it's like okay an ipa that stands for an indian pale ale apparently i didn't know that originally but me and this man we had this sort of quite enjoyable he he was clueless as to what he wanted and i was clueless as to what we had in stock so there was quite it was, it was kind of a mirror, a mirror really, you know, maybe I was him really, maybe I wanted the pint. That's how confused both of us were. I ended up ordering for myself. But it was, it's nonetheless really enjoyable. And uh, it's quite nice that, like, I don't know, it's my first kind of idea of an income. It's quite exciting, you know, money. But that said, it's also, so I'm earning money from doing it, but I'm also doing something which feels good for my environment, like I'm helping people i'm bringing them their drinks i'm of course they pay for their drinks i'm not really being all that kind but it just feels like i'm doing something okay so altogether it's quite nice i don't know how jeff bezos does it i don't understand how you could relish in such like a a, a luxurious lifestyle but just knowing that it's well mm, this is this is the issue is that he had a product and people really like the product so there's not really a problem there until you're well Let's just say, so far, so good, right? He's a great man, a moral, moral man. All the philosophers love him. Great man, okay? He's got charities out the ass, for example, but he doesn't. Maybe he does. But then you start, like, uh, doing, like, labor, and you start not paying, your, not paying your people. So then you're all of a sudden not that good anymore. I don't think he cares. I'm, I, I'd be... If uh, Mr. Bezos is one of the three people that listen to the Jollyman podcast, he's, he's a winner, actually. He's a great man. Um... Yeah, um, I'm, I've just started reading this book called Sapiens, which is about the kind of the history of the human race. I'm only a few pages in, maybe like 15, 20. But there's all sorts of cool ideas. I didn't realise that we, like, we... Because well, well, when I look at the... If I leave my house, I think, damn, humans, although we've got a lot of tragedies, we've kind of created this insane structure of just support. Like, I can just walk down the pavement and no bear's going to, like, turn up and, like, turn me inside out. No bear's going to do that. If, if, if I walk down down to the seaside a shark's not just going to come out and uh, decide that i'm you know quick snack for example my little uh quick little i'm probably a bit crunchy really uh, 
not the whole lot of meat. Uh, I've got mullet as well. Cough, cough that up. I don't know if, if, if sharks cough or produce some little hairballs like the cats do. It'd be quite, kind of cute if they did. I, I don't I don't think sharks can cough because they don't have necks. I think having a neck is quite an important part of coughing. It seems to me at least because the head needs movement you know, to cough. And sharks, if they move their head, everything moves. You know, it can't it can't bop its head to music, for example. I, I I live in Hackney. I don't really have to worry about sharks, but it, you, or bears. But you understand where I'm coming from here. Like if you look back, like seventy thousand years ago, we were all just tribes. And come on, that's quite quite interesting. And there were all these like neighbouring tribes and things, and we kind of got pushed around by lions, but we didn't really mind that much. Because um, we were still doing okay and we had fire and it kept us warm and... Oops, I pressed the button. Yeah, it kept us warm. And, um... But also, there's just the, the potential idea that there were multiple species of human. Well, like, factually, but imagine in the present there are like, different species of human. That's kind of insane to think about for me. Um, but anyway, I don't have to, really. It's Because it's never, probably never, never going to happen until, until, like... Maybe in the future we have robot people. That'd be quite fun. We kind of do already. You know, well, it depends. Prosthetic limbs are pretty robotic, especially those ones. You know, those people, all their fingers got blown off, and yet they make these metal fingers. That's quite impressive. That's a lot of technology. Um. Yeah. Ah. Well, you see, I. I you can probably. Oh, also, yeah. I just realised I teased you guys earlier. I didn't tell you what my failure was this morning. I realised that this isn't all about me, but I'm just that the I'm trying to get across a deep kind of human understanding of you know my problems are kind of everyone understands the problem, and I think maybe you'll be able to relate to it a little bit. Basically, someone sent me an email. I was doing my night shift, and then well, a shift that went late, I should say, and I didn't check the email, and I woke up, and I missed my. Um, I've missed my opportunity to organise my volunteering at Crisis, which is a really bad move for me. And when it comes to first impressions, it's just not not really ideal. And I've got a mullet, so they're gonna think, "Oh, whoa, here comes the mullet man who's doesn't uh, care about authority or helping homelessness." Um, or maybe I'm just being anxious and what we call immature. It'll be fine. It'll be cool. I'll I'll, I'll smile and I'll I'll uh, sh tell people that. The, the clothes they want to buy look nice. Um, I'm quite good at that. Probably. I haven't actually got much experience doing that kind of thing. The, the kind of annoying walk. Kind of, I applied for crisis so that I'd have some experience that I could say when applying for other jobs. So the crisis is voluntary work. It's a charity. But then I was going to say, oh, look, I work at charity. Um, and then get the job. But then I got my job first. So now I've just kind of stuck with crisis, which is a fantastic opportunity. Nonetheless, me and my friend have made this website. It's actually so much fun, like just making a website because you can make it look all really like neat and everything and as it should do. And then you can just for fun quickly add like loads of paragraphs about all sorts of kind of things. So for example, I had this paragraph and it was like, oh, we are trying to do this. We're trying to better the community. And uh, then, you know, you can go really rogue and say, you know, we're trying to overthrow the uh, corporate bureaucracy, pinning the locals down. You know, all of a sudden, and raise some middle-class eyebrows, things like that. It's pretty cool, though. Wix.com. I'm going to do a little uh, plug for them here because it's a really good website. And if you want to make websites, they're superb. They really are superb. Everything's simple. Everything's doable. Everything's quite cheap. Everything's friendly. You can add little chats in your websites. It's really fantastic. Also, my Nelson Mandela video is going to be up soon. I think I've talked about it, but basically, I'm going to do this on Friday. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little um, paragraph and I'll read it about... Because I read Nelson Mandela's autobiography and I'm going to talk about uh, him as a, an idea of freedom. And then I'm going to walk to his statue in London, which is in central London. Because um, his book's called Long Walk to Freedom. And I'm going to say that he's the embodiment of freedom, you see. So I'm doing a long walk to freedom at almost like he did but you understand the idea so that's gone friday that should be quite nice that's gonna be quite serious because i think it was a really valuable experience for me to read read that 
and I would recommend it of course. But don't worry, I don't only do reading, I also play games and get frustrated and there's this little hole in my desk so I'm not actually good, uh, like a particular, uh, uh, you know, I'm not a great person basically. Don't, you know, don't get too distracted, I don't mean to, what's it called when you put it up front, when you uh, shop window effect. Ah, <sighs> A level P. People are getting pretty confident now with the masks, you know, just walking about the place, being all friendly. I mean, they're not even wearing masks. They wear them on their chin, you see. It's really effective. If you have a weak chin, this is this is the era for you. You can get all sorts of partners and modeling groups and it'll be all hip and trendy to hide your chin. Um, but you just need to make sure you've invested that because as soon as masks are out of fashion, your, your, your uh, value is going to plummet, unfortunately. It's just plummet right down. Unless, oh, well, you see, if weak, if people with weak chins are very successful in the modeling industry due to masks and that becoming like a fashion trend, how about afterwards, when we take our masks off, we begin to accept people that have weak chins and then they become the beauty standard and all of us with prominent chins or, you know, chins that aren't really noteworthy just fall, fall to ashes. A um, li little bit of a complex, complex idea there. I think we'll be okay. Chins. We chins. I don't know. What, we chins. That's unfortunate. That's not what you want. Really. It's just something off about it. But there, I mean, you can also, you can still be beautiful. And I don't want anyone to feel a little bit disheartened. I mean, yeah, you can't really change it. That's, that's the issue with chins and facial things. Is you just, you're, you're stuck. You know, I, I've always considered my nose to be slightly too prominent. Myself. Just from within. That's how I felt about myself. This abstract being and my consciousness of thousands of different experiences decided okay quite decisively decisively that my nose seems a little bit large but i can't change it so i went to a beach and a dog bit my nose this is a fact i've got a big scar on my nose because it was bitten by a dog and then i broke it playing rugby so it's had a it, it's really got a story element to it and it's kind of a souvenir i bring around with me on my face you know just to say you know, life can sometimes hurl dogs and heads a dog at you with teeth and it bites your nose. And with rugby, I went to tackle this person and then he sort of just like threw his head backwards. I was behind him and it just like, pfft. my nose was just, you know, no longer geometric. It just became bulbous. It started to leak red liquid. I looked in the mirror, my mum was quite shocked, all the other rugby people were quite shocked because my nose really, I looked like a hammerhead or something, right? All oh, those whales with the really like square heads, I just really square nose. Oops, I keep pressing down buttons. But it was fine nonetheless. You, you can always triumph, I think, pretty much always. I mean, there's probably situations where you can't, but I'm pretty sure my evaluation is that you can always, always triumph, whatever it is. Feeling a little bit anxious, oh, you know, I've got to go and do this little job, oh, oh no, my bike tire's broken, oh dear, you know. You can, yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. That's what you got to tell yourself. You know, if you fail to communicate to do some volunteering work, which you kind of applied for half-heartedly, well, just keep going, cook yourself some eggs, spend too, far too many hours on your phone, you'll be fine. Phones are awful, man. Help, help, help. This is my plea for help. I don't know what to do. I think I'm addicted. I think a lot of people are addicted. A lot of my friends are. But it's not even... This is the issue with phones. It's not addiction in like a... In like a physical sense of, oh my god, I'm, I'm going to go on my phone. But now I have to have it with me. And if it's on the table in front of me, I have to put it out of my eyesight. Because if I look at it, I, I, it, it's like a tether. It starts communicating, whispering in my ear. It's like I'm spiritually connected to this damn device made by an eight-year-old, right? It's not really what I want to have, to be. Maybe I'll just go out and be a hermit. Go live in a tree or something. Living in a tree. I, you can't really plant tomatoes in a tree or anything. You can't, you can't do that. The tribes did it though. They did it for tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of years to produce me sitting here at this microphone bitching about applying for a job which ends homelessness and on that note i'm going to end the podcast and i hope you enjoyed it and we'll be here next week as usual on the jollyman podcast thank you for listening and have a lovely evening goodbye <laughs>